Hello, my name is Martin Henson. I'm the head teacher of the Nobel School, and it's um, uh, I'm very proud to be speaking to you at our virtual open evening. Obviously, this year we're going to have to do things slightly differently. Normally, I do three talks to a packed audience. But today I'm on my own in the auditorium to introduce what we're going to do this year. Now in a moment you'll see my talk from last year when I talk about the expectations that we have in the school and try to, um, in a sense, lay out our stall and offer to you the vision and the culture of the school. I always say to people, this is a choice for you. You need to make the choice about the school that best suits your child. I'll explain to you in a moment what we stand for. I need you to look at that and actually seriously consider, is this the school for your child? If it is, we'd be absolutely delighted to have them. Okay, we really want to encourage you to apply. Um, but it's important that you listen to what we say because this is what the school stands for and this is the culture of the school. After my speech, you'll see some speeches from other members of the school community. The head boy and the head girl will speak to you. And then we'll have a discussion amongst some year eight students where they'll ask some questions about their first year at Nobel. At the end of their discussion, I will come back to conclude that particular part of our presentation. There will also be, in a separate video, some discussions from the heads of department about some of the work that students will be covering when they're in year seven next year. So we'll have, for example, the head of English and the head of Key Stage 3 English discussing what your children will be studying in English if they were to join us next September. And we'll do that for all of the subjects that they'll be studying next year. We thought that that would give you a really good insight and try to replicate the experience that you would have by walking around the school and getting to know and meet people um, that would be teaching your children. And finally, already on our website, but I'll direct you to it as well, is um, a video that we have which is a virtual tour of the school. It kind of, you can click on various parts of the school and it will take you to those parts and it will show you what the school is like um, inside. Because I know that because this is a virtual open evening, many of you would have liked to have come round to look at the school, but obviously that is not possible um, at the moment. So I hope you enjoy um, the presentations. I'll be back in a moment to talk to you again, but um, for the time being, this is my talk from September 2019. Thank you. This is the head teacher's speech. Um, I'm going to say glowing things about this lovely school, um, and afterwards you'll have an opportunity to go around the school and um, make your own judgment, I guess. There's all sorts of ways you can judge a school, um, and you'll have your opinions on the type of school that you're looking for your for your child looking for for your child. I, I'm not I'm not a salesman. I'm not here to make a pitch to get you all to want to come to the school. What I will do, though, is I'll talk very clearly about what we stand for as a school, what we think are the, the principles and the values that we think are important, and what we're trying to achieve with the young people that come here. And in the end, it's down to you, I guess, to choose whether you think that fits with what you want for your child. Um, just, just a few words about me. As you can see, I've been around for a long time. Been a teacher for 35 years. Um, I was calculating for 27 of those years, I've been a member of a senior team in a school, so it's a long time. Um, don't be fooled by that, please. Don't be thinking that, um, you know, he's coming to the end of his career or anything like that. Nothing could be further from the truth. I've still got the fire in my belly. I still want the school to go forward and to improve further. Um, I actually love working here. Um, all my career before this was in London schools. I still live in London. I commute up to Stevenage, and I have done for the last um, seven years. I've enjoyed every moment of it, and, um, and I'm hoping to enjoy a few more years doing the same job. I've got a fantastic staff and a lovely school. Um, our staff get stronger every year. 
We're committed to training them to make them better teachers than they were the year before. We have a mantra in the school, which is everybody in the school wants to be better than they were the year before, including me as the head teacher, and I try to model that behaviour as much as I can. Um, I've got five of my own children for my sins. I've got three older ones, and I've got two eight-year-old twin daughters who are fiery. And, um, uh, and I, so I'm going through all that kind of stuff. So they're at primary school. They'll be going through secondary transition. Um, so we'll be choosing a school for them in North London when their time comes. And I've got three older children, so I know what it's like to sit where you're sitting. I also know what it's like to be the parent of children that aren't perfect. Let's face it, very few children are. Okay? So what we're looking for um, from the beginning is to say, we've got a partnership going on here. You know, you're the parents, we're the teachers, we're trying to do the same thing, which is to do the best for the children when they come to the school. Okay? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we're going to do that and what our ambitions are. Okay? And then I've got some helpers from across the school. I've got two year eight students and I've got the head boy and head girl. I'll let them talk for themselves when it comes to their turn. So, what are our values? What do we stand for as a school? It's, you, I think you could ask anybody, but you'll have to be the judge of it and there will be open mornings that you can come and have a look. If we're anything, we're a happy school. If we're anything, we're a kind, and caring school. Um, it's, it's central to my philosophy on education that that's the case. Um, we work with children, and we work with children, even naughty children, we work to help them improve. Um, we do it in a considerate, considered way. Um, you'll find very little, if any, shouting in the building. That's not our style. We like to form relationships with young people and we like to form relationships with families. Sometimes I form relationships with families a bit more than other families and I see them more often. Okay? Um, but, you know, that happens and I don't mind that. Um, and often we get to the end of these children's time at school and we can part company on good terms and children have got the qualifications they needed to go off and do stuff. We're not under any illusion, okay, that every student comes to here and is going to be perfect. So we've got positive relationships, mutual respect. I try to model that. Um, we certainly embrace diversity. Um, our panel of students this morning reflect that. Uh, sorry, this, this evening reflect that. Um, uh, and that's what it's like across the school. We have people from all walks of life. We have different sh students from all different backgrounds, and that makes us all the richer um, for that. And what we try to do is we celebrate successes where they are, and we aspire all of us to grow academically, culturally, socially. So, and this is the key thing. And every assembly I ever do with the young people is about this. You need to leave school with the wherewithal, and whatever that is, to lead a happy life. And a happy life isn't necessarily a life where you make lots of money. It might be. But a happy life is where you can go on to be somebody who's good at work and gets on with their colleagues, somebody who's a good person to their parents, um, a good neighbour and those sorts of things. It's about character and being good citizens. Okay? The way we embody that and... and and the way that we do that is our students become, when they join us, they become Nobelians. And everyone's a Nobelian in the school, all the staff and the students. Our aim is to develop our Nobelians into outstanding Nobelians. I'll talk a little bit more a bit later as we go through how we do that. So, Nobelians, that's our behaviour. Okay, it's just three school rules. We don't have loads and loads and loads, we just have three. We expect all of our children to be ready to learn. We expect all the children to be um, respectful. And we expect all the children to behave in a safe manner. I think if you could think of every school rule that you had when you were at school, you could probably put it into one of those three words. And that's the, that's the, that's the language that we use with, with students. 
you shouldn't be doing that because it's not respectful. We don't want you to run down the corridor because it's not safe. It's not safe for yourself, but it's, it's not safe for others too. And that's the way that we describe things to youngsters. We think that our students understand the rules of the school because they're simple and straightforward. You just need to be ready, respectful and safe. We look after each other. Uh, I've mentioned that before. We want students to be courageous and resilient and responsible role models as they grow up through the school. Um, we want them to try hard, as hard as they possibly can from the word go at school. We want them to reach the stars if they possibly can. We, want, we have that aspiration. We want to have the highest expectations of all the young people that come to the school. You can, you can see what I've, what I've pulled up on the screen there. We want them to work hard, have fun, and develop a, learn, a love of learning. And we want to challenge ourselves, develop good character, and achieve success. Now, that's for students, but it's also for staff. I share this with staff when we go through the appointment process. We want our teachers to be doing the same. So I'd expect my staff to be ready, respectful, safe. Okay, in the same way students are. So, you know, that's the school we are. Okay, so we had an offset last year. What did they say about our values? Um, I've underlined the words I liked very much in that, and obviously I've picked out the bit from the Ofsted report that I wanted to show you, but it's on there, you can look at it. It's a glowing report, it's a really lovely report, we're proud of it. We like that idea that we're a powerful community. I think the students will tell you about that when they speak. Okay, and they like the notion of being a Nobelian. And what did they say about our character development? We were particularly pleased with this. They said that the school's work to promote pupils' personal development and welfare is outstanding. It's a, it's a good offset word, outstanding. And we're a good school, currently, according to offset, and we shouldn't get obsessed with it, but we would like to be an outstanding one. Two Ofsted since I've been here, both of them were good. It was, an, it was a requires improvement school when I arrived. So, you know, we're on, a, we're on a trajectory upwards, but we would like to hit that outstanding mark if we could. And, you know, I'll be frank with you, we need to just improve those GCSE results a little bit. And had they been a little bit better, just a little bit better, then it probably would have been outstanding last February. In terms of A-level, year in, year out at A-level, we, we get outstanding results. Um, you know, students come into the sixth form and they make progress and they go off to do uh, wonderful things. We're very proud. I mean, if I could tell you, I mean, you have to believe me because it, it was a confidential conversation, but we were that close to the inspector describing the sixth form or giving it the mark of outstanding. In fact, we argued about it for an hour, about an hour and a half, but we came down on the side of, they thought it was very good and there were a couple of things why it wasn't outstanding, but it was very, very close. It's a big sixth form. And all of you, if you come to the school, would expect all of the students to be aiming. Some of them might not get them there. Some of them might not want to get there. We would support them in everything they wanted to do. But we would aim at the beginning to think that everyone had, has the um, ability to aim towards doing A-levels or a vocational course in the sixth form. But this is the good news. Nobody leaves the sixth form with no place. Nobody leaves our sixth form. Last year, nobody left without either, um, as you can see, a job, work, um, a high-level apprenticeship, which is kind of work, okay, or a university place. We're talking about a lot of students here. We're talking about 150 students in the upper sixth. And none of them were left with nowhere to go. We're proud of that. Um, and they, you know, therefore they've all achieved. So, you know, we're, we're, we're really, really pleased with that. We had over, for the first second year, actually, we had over 100 uh, UCAS um, applications uh, this year. But we had 100 that actually went to university last year, which was the first we'd ever got to three figures. So that was really good. They go to all sorts of places. We didn't actually get anybody into Oxford and Cambridge this year, but it's the first time for a while that we didn't. Um, but we have got somebody going off to me do medicine. We've got somebody to go off and do dentistry. We've got two students here and others who are going off to do law. Students are choosing really high-powered courses um, courses that will go off where they can be, you know, really, really solid professional people. Um, uh, 
and you know, getting places at the very best universities. Um, you know, if, if you know what a Russell Group University is, it's about the 20 top universities in the country. You know, and around a quarter of our students were, of the people that went to university, went to one of those universities. You need to be getting sort of A's and maybe B's for your A-levels in order to go there. So in, this, in the sixth form, students are achieving very high grades and going off to the very best places. We want it to increase, though. We want to pick out students, and I don't want you to think I'm being elitist here, but what we want to do is to find people who might want to go to Oxford or Cambridge, let's say, and we want to train them from year seven onwards in order so they've got the web of the quiz. The problem we have is our students often get interviews, but they don't get in. And we think it's something to do with the confidence that they might have in comparison with students that may have gone to fee-paying schools or whatever. So we've got to try and train them a little bit more, you know, in order to do that. Uh, as I say, we're not elitist. I'm just as interested in who gets a job. We're delighted when people get higher level apprenticeships. Going back to that first slide that I talked about, it's about doing what you want to do and being happy. That's the important thing. That's what I'm sure, you know, I've said to you, I'm a parent, I'm sure that's what you want for your children. Um, the idea that they're going to work at school and get the qualifications so that they can be happy and perhaps leave home and support themselves at some stage. It's a bit early for you to be thinking of that, I suppose, young people, isn't it? But that's what we would like them to do. Okay. There's a bit about the grades. 51% of the grades were A's or B's. I think I intimated that. That's outstanding. And 73% were A to C grades. Um, we do have applied courses in the sixth form, vocational courses. Um, and they're, 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 we, our students do extremely well. We've got a good team, a de dedicated team of staff who teach in the vocational area. And you can see we've got lots of merits and distinctions there. Every single student passed their applied course. What did Ofsted say about the sixth form? Leaders have established a culture of raising aspirations at all levels. They are relentless in their focus on improvement. I hope you're picking that up about me. It's not put on, it's real. That's what drives me. That's why I keep coming to work. I just want to improve all the time, want the school to improve. And the leadership in the sixth form is outstanding. Clear vision for success. Um, and teachers are aware they need to manage students' motivation, aspirations alongside potential graduate employment. Anyway, time to move on to our young people. Hello, my name is Alex Boxer and I'm the current head boy at the Nobel School. I've been here since year seven and I'm currently studying maths, further maths and physics. I do have future aspirations to go on to do engineering and at university and pursue that as a career and the school is thoroughly helping me with that. You know, being here since year seven, I can say that I wouldn't change uh, the school I chose at all. You know, this, is, this, this school has helped me do everything I want, I want to and have helped me achieve far greater than I could ever have expected or hoped for. You know, throughout my GCSEs, the teachers, maths, English, sciences, whatever, you name it, would always stay behind, they would always help, they'd always put in that extra mile to try and help make sure I got my target grades and even further, not just trying to achieve what I thought I could, but what I dreamed I could. So you know that the school has always been there to try and help me. And I think that that has also been particularly poignant with everything that's going on in the world right now. You know, we've been in lockdown for six months, roughly, and the school has always been there and has tried to put in place the best type of measures to try and make sure we stay on target. I've had structured lessons, online lessons through Teams. They've even tried to get us back in for a few days during, during, during lockdown to try and make sure that we didn't fall behind and make sure we could keep up with what we wanted to achieve. You know, the, the teachers and the staff here have thoroughly, thoroughly put in the hard work to try and make sure that we can keep up with the rest of the schools in Stevenage, North Hearts and even the country. Um, and that, that's thoroughly helped me in the application process to try and go off to uni. 
Not only have they helped us in the academic sense, always, throughout, but they've also, in the extracurricular sense, I've been given multiple opportunities throughout my school in life, through year 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, even in the sixth form, to try and go on, go and play for sports teams, basketball, football, rugby, netball. There, there's, there's been all sorts for everyone to try and get involved in. But leading on from that, there's also the multitude of trips that we've been asked to participate in. Some have been invites, some have been open to everyone. You know, they, they've always tried to include an opportunity for everyone to get involved and to have the best experience they could. And I, I, I believe that you, that you won't necessarily get that there anywhere else. In my personal experience, it's always been the teachers that have been putting that effort in to try and help us. You know, it, a, a lot of has come from myself, but the te I wouldn't have been able to do it without the teachers. And I, I, can, I can say that with 100% with certainty that they will do the same for your children. Um, it's not just me as well. I know that everyone else I've, I go to school with and have been with since year seven says the same thing. You know, they, they, they don't want to change. They don't want to go anywhere else because they know that this is the best place to try and get that support, that extra help, that drive and push forward to try and achieve and become the best person you can be within a secondary school. And I think that you should put your faith in Nobel to try and do the best for you as well. And I would like to say thank you for listening to me and I hope you take everything on board I've said when it comes to making your decision. Thank you. Hello, my name is Satara Aman and I'm the current head girl at the Nobel School. I'm currently in year 13 and hoping to study law in university. I would like to talk to you about the amazing experiences I've had at Nobel. I became a Nobelian when I transitioned here from uh, in year 10. I came here from Newcastle and the immense help that, that was available to me was amazing. The teachers dedicated their time, their effort and their resources into helping me catch up with the content I had missed. This was amazing as they had showed their dedication to my studies. Um, I, in addition to this, I was given the opportunity to attend several sessions during the holidays to further my understanding of the topics. I also attended a talk by a famous lawyer um, at the Nobel School as they had hosted the event. Through this, I was able to ask the school for help to contact her and secure two-day uh, work shadowing at her law firm. The law firm is, was in central London and really helped me understand the experiences better. The school doesn't just help with short-term goals such as GCSEs or A-levels. It also helps tremendously with your future. And they keep this in mind. Additionally, the Nobel School has a dedicated pastoral team, The Bridge, to help any students who need extra help. I have been lucky enough to witness their work during the summer holidays as they helped a group of Year 7 students transition into the Nobel School. They helped them understand what the school community is like, what the rules are here, and uh, how to fit in better. It was amazing uh, for them as I spoke to them and they really enjoyed their experiences here. When I talked to them afterwards, during their first day at Nobel, they also talked about how amazing it was as they were able to feel confident with their new school and being surrounded by a larger group of people. The teachers here are also very trustworthy. I have talked to my form tutors several times about personal difficulties and they have kept the matter pri private. I was able to express my concerns and they have helped me further. I have also talked to students my age about their experience with the pastoral care team. They have all had experience, uh, experiences with it and they have all commended it really. They have all recommended it. They believe that the experience have helped them and uh, not just with their work, but also with their, with their mental health. I have only mentioned a select number of experiences at the Nobel School. The school is amazing and I really do recommend it. For me to be a Nobelian, I have to show self-discipline, which is to uh, help others and to ultimately improve myself. For me, being a Nobelian means that I wear my school uniform, which shows my pride. To me, being a Nobelian means to be kind and respectful to other people. To me, being a Nobelian means that I have to work hard and try my best.
When I first came to Nobel, I was worried that I wouldn't have the correct equipment for each day, but as you go along the year, you realise it's much easier than it looks. I was most worried about coming to Nobel was that I would get lost, but you don't need to worry because you find your way around after a while. I was most worried about not making any new friends, but I shouldn't have been since everyone is really nice and I've got a lot of close friends now. I was most worried about forgetting which lessons and books I had, but I've realised if I packed my bags the night before then I'd be ready for the next day. Um, when I first came to Nobel, the thing that surprised me most was how easy it is to actually get around the school when it looks much harder. When I first came to Nobel, I was surprised about all the different teachers and all the fun subjects they teach. I was most surprised about how many people were in this school but still got treated as an individual. When I came to Nobel, I was surprised about how many different subjects and books we had. My favourite lesson at Nobel is English as I really like writing stories and essays. My favourite lesson at Nobel is PE because I love all the sports they do. My favourite lesson is science since I find it really fascinating. My favourite lesson is food technology because I love cooking and learning about it. The best thing about Nobel is how good the facilities are that you can use for lunchtime and after school clubs. The best thing about Nobel for me is that all the teachers are friendly. The best thing about Nobel for me is that the teachers push you to be your best, which makes your work better. The best thing for me at Nobel is that I'm on the school for the team. My proudest moment from Year 7 would be receiving a Spanish award for hard work. My best thing about Year 7 was that I got picked for the school football team. My proudest moment from Year 7 is being in the top 20 of all my subjects and going to the celebration breakfast. My proudest moment in Year 7 was completing my first English essay. My top tip for starting at Nobel would be to never worry about anything as it's going to be fine. My top tip for starting Nobel is that you pack your bag the night before so you're ready for the next school day. My top tip for starting Nobel is to get to lessons on time. My top tip for starting Nobel is check to my homework every day so you're up to date with all your homework. So there are wonderful students, I hope you'll agree. Um, uh, they're really impressive and we're very, very proud of them. All that's left for me to say now is, if you like what you've heard at our virtual open evening and you want to send your child to our school, we look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to receiving your application. So good luck with secondary transfer. Take care and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.